Good evening. My name is Betsy Smith. I'm the former executive director of Equality Maine. I'm here this evening to introduce Mary Bonato. The truth is Mary Bonato needs no introduction, but for a person who's had such a profound impact on our community and our families, an introduction she will get. Mary's not only one of the great pioneers of the marriage movement, she's also one of the primary architects. Mary knew three decades ago that denying marriage to same-sex couples was unconstitutional and ultimately would not stand the test of time. But she also knew we couldn't begin dismantling this discrimination until the time was right. That time presented itself in 1996 in Hawaii <clears throat> when co-pioneer Evan Wolfson won our nation's first legal argument on marriage. Although Hawaii voters overturned the victory, it positioned Mary to begin her historic journey of winning the freedom to marry one case at a time. Her first legal battle was in Vermont in 1999. Mary and her colleagues won that battle, won that court case, but the, legislature, but the court left it to the legislature to decide whether to call it marriage or to create a separate status that, that provided the same rights and benefits. Welcome civil unions into the marriage movement. A huge step forward, but not full marriage. Full marriage equality came with her next legal battle in Massachusetts in 2003. Mary then went on to win marriage in a court case in Connecticut in 2009. And in 2013, perhaps her greatest achievement of all, taking down DOMA at the United States Supreme Court. Mary has been involved in nearly every state's effort to win the freedom to marry, but none so intimately as here in Maine, the place she calls home. Many of you stood shoulder to shoulder with Mary, beginning with the Sea of Red at the public hearing in Augusta, <laughs> to the indescribable joy of passing the marriage bill, to the heart-wrenching defeat at the polls and then through perseverance and momentum building and changing hearts and minds and ultimately to that greatest of victory at the polls on November 6, 2012. As profound of an impact as Mary's head on marriage, it is not the only issue on which she's made historic progress. In her role as GLAD Civil Rights Project Director, a position she's held for 25 years, Mary's played a critical role in advancing the rights and protections of nearly everyone in the LGBTQ community, including transgender and gender nonconforming people, youth, elders, parents, families, people living with HIV and AIDS, and the list goes on. While Mary needs no introduction, I gave it to you anyway, because the incredible accomplishments of this incredible woman are worth repeating over and over until they are forever captured in the history books. It is my greatest honor to present Equality Maine's Lifetime Achievement Award to my good friend and colleague, Mary Bonato. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you, Betsy. I didn't know who was introducing me. Um, all right, I'm using the glasses, but I have to admit, I still feel like I'm a little young for a Lifetime Achievement Award. Um, so I hope it's not a statement that I'm being ushered out the door. 
Um, I also want to congratulate all of the other awardees. Jobs well done. It's a pleasure and it is an honor to be with all of you tonight. I don't get out as much as I would like to, you know? The phone, the computer, the traveling. Um, so it's great to see all of you. And before I say anything else, I want to thank my family. I have to thank my family. I want to thank my family. Um, my spouse, Jenny Riggins, our two daughters, our family of affinity, including Sive Nealon. Um, I want to thank um, my compatriots at GLAD, uh, the board and the staff there. You've now heard about Jason, otherwise known as Jansen Wu. Um, because at GLAD, where I've now been for 25 years, the commitment, the strategic thinking, uh, the in unbelievable legal acumen, uh, the first class work has just inspired me, and that's part of why I've stayed for all this time. So I want to take a few minutes, if I may, and reflect on a little bit of some of our hard-won victories and what they show is possible in the future. So when I first came to Maine as an attorney in private practice in 1987, MLGPA, which is Equality Maine's um, former name, was just three years old. It had been founded by USAR, USEER, visionary, Dale McCormick, and some others. <laughs> others in this room after the murder of Charlie Howard in 1984 in Bangor. And of course it was also a time when the emerging AIDS pandemic was striking even greater fear and hostility uh, into the public around us and causing that much more damage and discrimination. But then as now, Equality Maine has been blessed with strong leadership and savvy and committed staff and volunteers like those you saw tonight. And that has enabled Equality Maine for all these years now, 31 of them, to stand up for our worth and beauty, to stand up for equality, for freedom and for opportunity, and to say time and again for generation after generation that there is nothing about who we are that should limit our freedoms and opportunities period. As a Mainer, I am very thankful for Equality Maine and really want Equality Maine to continue playing this vital role. Now, of course, we in this movement is not just us in this room. It's so many others. And I just think it's kind of profound, especially if you were here. You know, I wasn't here 31 years ago, but you've been here for a while. You, can, you know that it's not always been the case that we've had legislators, advocates, public officials of all sorts standing with us. And they're standing with us because they know that LGBTQ people are part of we, the people. And we've had clergy and congregants of all kinds of faiths passionately, righteously with us because we are all God's children. That wasn't the situation so long ago. And of course, not just in the marriage campaigns, but we certainly saw it in the marriage campaigns as well. There are so many people who have begun their journeys to supporting us because someone got out of their comfort zone and talked to their family, their friends, their childhood, BFF, their faith leaders about these issues and it moved, it moved them in the direction where they can now stand with us. So the accomplishments are many, the allies are many, all of these supporters didn't just spring to life one day, it all took work. And I wanna talk for a minute about something we haven't talked about really in any depth for a long time, which is our non-discrimination law here. The non-discrimination law we have here is one of now 19 19 in the nation that covers sexual orientation and gender identity. But can I say something? We've been working on these issues for 40 years and we have 19 states with comprehensive non-discrimination laws. Yeah, we have a handful of other states that have sexual orientation only, but that just tells you how hard it is to make these things happen. And we have one. And again, it didn't just happen. It took over 20 years of advocacy in the legislature. It took not one, not two, but three fights at the ballot before we finally won and convinced our fellow Mainers that it was the right thing to do in 2005. 
Yes, exactly. And let's not forget that so many of you, I bet, in this room were involved in the early 1990s in defending the Portland Ordinance, the South Portland Ordinance, the Lewiston Ordinance, from attempts to repeal them. And these were all building blocks. And I want to mention and lift up these building blocks, these long ago battles, because these are exactly the kinds of battles we need to have now as we try to put in place an agenda with that much more freedom, equality, and opportunity 30 years out, ending HIV by 2030, all of that. And I want to just talk about, as much as we make progress also on something like non-discrimination, how many things remain undone. So now, we're 10 years out from that 2005 ratification. And we still don't have any guidance at all, any regulations telling us what that non-discrimination law means for our youth in schools. And we all know, and you've heard tonight, that it can be very tough to be a young LGBTQ person. We can thank the courage of people like Ari, we can thank Listen, the Outrights, the AG's office. We can thank the determination of youth. We can thank their school advisors for the fact that in this state, we have 75 GSTAs at the high school level. That's almost half of the high schools in the state. And we know those organizations, those GSTAs, are crucial for reducing harassment building up the students who are in them, and improving the school environment. But can I also just say, like, what about the other half? And we need to get that other half. And by the way, there's also middle school, which is really, really tough. Um, I've got, we've got two middle schoolers. It's a very tough place. So there's plenty of work to do. No guidance yet about how to do it. We've also had to defend this non-discrimination law from attempts to carve people out, oops, we really didn't mean that, and create new exemptions. So in 2011, uh, we had a situation where the main legislature, some people in the main legislature, tried to uh, essentially create uh, a new definition that said essentially transgender people have to use the wrong bathrooms. They have to use the bathroom that is according to their biological gender at birth. And you know, thankfully, the trans community, the LGBT wider community, uh, Wayne Maines, who I believe is here, and his incredible daughter, Nicole Maines, <laughs> Rock this thing. And we didn't let it happen in the legislature, and we didn't let it happen in court either, where uh, there was a case, um, a case where GLAD attorneys and attorney Jody Knopfsinger here in, in Portland persuaded our state high court, uh, which ruled in January 2014, that the non-discrimination law means what it says. And what that means is that a girl who is also transgender gets to use the girl's bathroom, uh, period, no excuses, no exceptions, uh, as the school had so forcefully argued. And I just want to say, just as a little aside here, I know Nicole and Wayne are here tonight, and I just want to say, was it not incredible? Was it not unbelievably wonderful uh, in la last November uh, to see Glamour magazine listing Nicole as one of 50 phenomenal women of the year who are making a difference. There's a lot of issues I could spotlight and that I'd like to spotlight. Uh, Elise earlier tonight mentioned some tough battles we have coming up ahead, and it's true. This religious exemption language, I haven't seen the final language, uh, but if it's anything like the laws and the bills that are sweeping the nation at the moment, what it most likely will be is an exemption to our non-discrimination law that is not specific to transgender people, it's specific as to everybody, and it says that as it's likely to say that as long as you, you have an individual religious belief, uh, you don't have to comply with the non-discrimination laws if it offends you or it's going to upset your religious belief to do so. Uh, we can't let that happen. That is not driving a truck. 
through, that's not a hole, that's a, for a truck. That's just like eviscerating and shredding the non-discrimination law. We can't let it happen, and we need every single one of you in this room to be there and defend this law as it exists right now and not let that exemption come into place. And I want to single out the ACLU, the Maine Women's Lobby, and our friends in the Choice Community, and of course, Equality Maine and GLAD and others who are there fighting to keep this non-discrimination law in place. Now, of course, there are other issues I could talk about. I could talk about marriage, um, and as Betsy just said, the battle has certainly been epic here, without a doubt. But I also just say, again, to lift up some of the other work that was done here in the state before then. You know, after Massachusetts, the Massachusetts court ruled in 2003, you know, in a fairly short order, over 30 states amended their constitutions after they'd already passed laws uh, just to make sure there is no question that same -se those same-sex couples, those homosexuals, are not going to be getting married. You know what? Maine didn't do that. With people and strategic savvy of people who I bet are in this room, we were able to defeat amendments. And that's why we had the chance to go for the law in 09, and why we had the chance to persuade people that their vote in 09 was wrong and to turn it around in 2012. We never had an amendment. And in fact, in an enormous credit to Equality Maine, when everybody was all abuzz about what was happening in Massachusetts, Equality Maine used it as an opportunity to pass a domestic partnership registry, which we still have and still need marriage or not. And that provides sensible, basic protections, particularly at, toward the end of life, for people, who are, for people who are not married. And you know what? Here's the deal about marriage. It's supposed to be a freedom, not a mandate. So we need protections for all those families who are not going to marry or choose not to marry. So that's, that is another thing I give a colony main credit for. So, so all of this is actually kind of an elaborate wind up to what I really want to say, which is whatever the issue is, and I realize I've only touched on a few, there are so many steps that we need from so many people to get to success, to think about, oh yeah, we have marriage now, but all those other things along the way have mattered so much. And in my view, absolutely none of this was inevitable. Absolutely none of it. And none of it depended on the work of one person, least of all, me. It happened because thousands and thousands of people across this state, and undoubtedly, again, many of you here, as well as others whose names are not known to us, found the courage to have those conversations, do smart advocacy, legislative strategy, lawsuits, knock on doors, go to lots and lots of meetings to get more justice done. And they did it again and again, year after year. And it's what we needed to get us to where we are now. And that's gonna be as true for the future as it's been for the past. So with everything that we've done in the last 30 years, which is truly amazing here in Maine and nationally, I wanna call on everyone, please, to harness that power and that hope, ride that momentum, keep it going, keep envisioning and revisioning and working. Because who here, I am asking, who here does not want a world in which LGBTQ people are not just tolerated, but valued and affirmed as the unique individuals that we all are, in which LGBTQ history is taught in schools it's part of the curriculum to break the generations of ignorance that allows vicious stereotypes to survive, in which teachers and camp counselors, iron workers and CEOs can all come out, just be out, and not have it make one whit of difference to their prospects in life. I'd also like to see really, really soon, a time when we don't have 1,000 young people between the ages of 13 and 24 seroconverting every month, most of whom are young men of color. And don't we want to see at both ends of the life spectrum, whether youth or elder, that people are safe and respected, and where we've overcome the attitudes that lead to family rejection that has caused so much pain, and in some cases, danger to our young people and our elders. And of course, I am looking forward to a day, oral arguments are in a month, 
decision by June. <laughs> I am looking forward to a day when we have marriage nationwide. I will talk about something else. <laughs> And I'm also uh, looking forward to the day when even after people were mar marry, that they don't get fired the day after they get married, which right now is possible in so many of the states. So is there anyone here who doesn't want that world? I didn't think so. All right. So to get all of this there, please, we need to rededicate ourselves, our talent, our passions, our skills, our time. We are all absolutely positively needed in this fight. Equality Maine needs you. GLAD needs you, the Maine Women's Lobby needs you, the ACLU needs you, Franny Peabody Center needs you, Maine Trans Network needs you, SAGE needs you, all the wonderful groups. We all need you to get this work done. I want to thank Equality Maine for this honor, but the great privilege and honor I have had is to work for things I deeply believe in with people I deeply admire and care about, and that is all of you. Thank you. Wait, don't forget this. So nice to meet you. Congratulations. Oh my God. <laughs>